Are you a fan of our podcast? If so, make sure you're following us on all of our social media channels. You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter by searching Trans2 Performance. By following us, you'll have access to exclusive content, special announcements, and more. Join the T2 community today. And welcome to the T2 Hubcast with me, Tracy Roberts. And me, James Cooper. That's going to seem really weird for some people because it's normally our Spence going, here's our Trace. Yeah. And it's me going, here's our James yeah. for a change. Yeah, slightly different dynamic. So how's your week been, James? Yeah, it's good. Friday? Yeah, we've had a good little week. It's been a bit of an intense one. It has. We're ready to, ready to kick on with a couple of podcasts. We are. So we thought we'd keep the ball rolling this morning. Spence and I had severe technical difficulties this morning. But we got there in the end. That's the one. Um, and we were just having a chat in the office about some stuff that we've been delivering, I guess, maybe on a, a bigger scale recently, probably due to the type of clients we've been working with. And our James has been working with some fire services in the last few weeks. Yeah. And um, it's meant a lot of print discussions. Yeah. Which is always, quick I mean, I love a print day, don't you? Yeah, quick repetitions and get it done. Let's go. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? But people, it never ceases to amaze me. Every single room that you get in when it comes to print, it's a light bulb moment for everyone, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Um, and what I love about the way that we do things here traditionally is that we take that information that you learn about yourself as an individual. And then usually on our second sort of interaction with that team, we then start to get them to look at the outside world <laughs> and how they can take what they've learned about their print and their shadow and their best self and use it to the best of their advantage. And a lot of the time we'll, you know, we'll talk to them about why they're, you know, how they're triggered into shadow behaviors, how they stay in best self. But we'll then lead it out into almost a discussion about mindset, really, mm. and the type of people you work with. Yeah. And it's it's sort of how we sort of impact those people as well. Yeah. Rather than just the way that we can just shout and get whip out and yeah. dangle the yeah. carrot, whatever it, whatever terminology you like to use. But yeah, really, it's what we do with it at T2, right? Yeah, and how we adapt. And I think that the one thing that I'm really keen to land on with this sort of thing, and it's actually interesting because Spence and I have just finished a podcast. If you've been listening uh, to the last one, mm. it was around mindset and it was around, you know, debate against fixed and growth. And we argued that there isn't a fixed and a growth. It's a spectrum. Mm. Okay. I would agree that it also links in quite nicely to this stuff that we're going to talk about today, which is, you know, we do kind of bring it down to certain types of mindset that we see a lot in a working environment. And it's to simplify it more than anything else. Um, and here at T2, we have six that we refer to. We thought we'd spend a little bit of time going through them today. Um, and we are going to talk a little bit about leadership styles because we'll go into this in a, in a further podcast in the future. But for us, it's about being able to start to put the jigsaw together, isn't it? Because to me, your vibe sometimes attracts your tribe. Mm. So your leadership style can actually be the making or the breaking of one of these mindsets. Definitely. And I think when we start looking at these in a little bit more detail, it's definitely going to be hopefully people that can make the links. Yeah, because I think quite often, and, we'll, and I know there's what I'm thinking of, that when we normally put it in front of people, the response mm. is usually the opposite to what we suggest. And then when we actually reverse engineer it, people go, ah i get it um and we often say how's that working out so far <laughs> and people go oh actually you're right that's not really worked in my favor so what we're going to look at is we're going to we're going to look at the different types of mindsets that we that we work with i also like to think of this from my own perspective because i think can i actually visualize for myself um as much as i'm very growth orientated in lots of areas there'll have been times in my life where i've probably won't be one of these mindsets if that makes sense because of the environment or the people or the triggers um, and, you know, whether it's made or, or broken you sometimes. Um, so I, I really want, if you're listening in now, it's not just to give you a little bit of an overview as to what these mindsets are, because I can guarantee in your mind's eye, when we talk through these, you'll imagine that person at work that you can think <laughs> yeah. or that person in your life. And we almost giggle about this, don't we? Because we, we definitely recognize this. But also think about where you've been in your life. Um, because if I'm honest, I think I've been each of these mindsets <laughs> at some point in my career. I've definitely been yeah. one of them. So definitely. let's look at that. Let's look yeah. at that. All right. So do you want to guide us through what the six mindsets are initially? And okay. then we'll build out from so, that. So just as a, let's go, do you want to start right at the very beginning, shall we? Let's start right at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, okay. So the yeah. first mindset that we're going to look at is an individual mindset. Mm, okay. Now, these sort of mindsets are, really quite dominant and directive mindset who have an okay. absolute conviction. Um, 
they normally see that it's their way is the best way. That's it, yeah. Tracy. There's no, yeah. there's no sort of if buts or maybes. It is, you yeah. know, I've been doing this for sometimes a long period of time. Yeah, I've got, I Get know away. what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing it. And by the way, I, I achieve my goals. Um, yeah. But sometimes very much resistant to coaching. Yeah. Which is slightly, um, gets a bit awkward. Could be tricky, can't it? Because yeah. I think with the, an individual mindset, I think the thing that stands out to me there is that we sometimes as leaders put them there, but we don't mean to put them there. Yeah. What I mean by that is sometimes you are a subject matter expert, right? Yeah. And in an organization, because you stand out, you kind of get put on a pedestal mm. and people look up to you so much or look to you for advice that you kind of end up as an individual mindset without even trying. So by default, you're an individual mindset. And then you might start to believe the hype. Mm. And then that creates that kind of yeah. almost a little bit of, um, you know, overconfidence in some areas. Other people, it's the other way around. Actually, they've come out fighting to prove themselves. Yeah. And it's a dog-eat-dog -dog kind of scenario. I suppose it depends on the environment, right? Yeah, definitely. But it's 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 really, the biggest thing for me with this mindset is that we've got to appreciate that in some environments, we create that. Okay. And in other environments, we don't create it directly, but because of the competition that we create in certain sales is a great example, isn't Definitely, it? Definitely. Yeah. It's like you or me is <laughs> that kind of mindset sometimes. Um, and that can create problems in itself, right? You've been in that environment. A hundred percent. Yeah. Not for yeah. very long. Thank <laughs> God. But, but yeah, that was a slightly different way for me because I, I, I'm part of the team. I want to be in the team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as it, an individual mindset would it's, it doesn't necessarily sit very well with me at no. all. And I think the interesting thing about it is it's not saying that this is a negative mindset because in a lot of ways, this is someone who's very focused. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's we're checking in on that person's behaviors more than anything. Because mm. that's the thing that that ranks sort of the lowest in terms of what we get from this type of because we're normally getting really good outputs. Mm. We're normally getting they might be your top salesperson. Performance is still good, right? Yeah, but their mannerisms, behaviors, and the way they rub other people up is is the tricky bit. So you've got to sit there and think, with this type of mindset, am I creating more problems? Mm. Because although you're getting, you know, some output, could you be getting more output if they were working collaboratively? Yeah. Could you be working um, a little bit harder or getting more results if they were more open to the world? Yeah. Um, so it's quite tricky because, I mean, what's the response you get? So let's just skip to the leadership style that we'd apply to this. So what's the first thing that someone says to you that they would do with this type of mindset if they felt they were having some trouble managing them? So the first thing they say is tell them. Get them told. Yeah, so you need to tell them what the te that's yeah. not the right way to be. If you do it my way, yeah, this isn't good enough. <laughs> and so, then, yeah, they'd mm. always say directive, wouldn't they? Yeah. So for directive, that's it's you know it's very much um, it's not a negative leadership style at all. It's very no. much given clear direction. Um, you know, less saying. I guess the, the sometimes how you do it. Sometimes sometimes policies and procedures dictate that. Right, that's a good example. However. <laughs> It can be the far end of that assertiveness, can't it, in directive? Yeah. And for a lot of people, they think, right, for someone who's got uh, an individual mindset, the best thing to do is to tell them what to do. And I always say, hey, how is that working out for you so far? Yeah, tricky. How, <laughs> how did that go? How did that go? <laughs> and in nine times out of 10, they'll say, do you know what? It just gets worse. And that's true because mm. all you're going to do with that mindset is trigger them, okay? The best way to deal with that type of mindset is, of course, to understand why they are there in the first place. You know, get to know them, understand the drivers. Um, and the other thing is you've got to be able to lift their spirits. So yeah. they've got, they're have got they only going to listen to someone who can show them more than what they think they can achieve. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And we've had it where people, and if you are, if, again, if you're leaders and you listen to this, or managers and you listen to this and you're thinking, I've just been trying to, bang the drum and keep people going mm. and go again, go again. But do you actually know what makes them tick? Exactly, have you had the conversation yeah. with them? And if yeah. you haven't, what's exactly. the reason for that? What's and, the reason for you and, not to And the that thing about someone who's here is if you make the link with why mm. they're there, so if they are driven by, you know, amazing results and things, there's a way of getting to grips with that without it becoming a competition. That's yeah. the way I see it. You can show them the way. So, um, leaning in with a bit of amiable leadership style, getting to know them, their individual drivers, making them feel like you're shoulder to shoulder in some respects before you then 
layer on that visionary leadership of now, here's where we go. Here's your next North Star. I'm going to show you what you can achieve. That's going to gain their respect because they think they're treating me as an individual. They appreciate my superpowers, if you like, but they're also able to show me that the stuff that I actually probably need their support on because they know where we're going next. And for me, that's a, a double bubble effect there, isn't it? The other thing is that once we've got them there, we can then start to lean into what we call collaborative leadership, because once we've got them to see, you know, there's possibilities that may be different to what they would have, you know, put in place, we can start to get them to see that as you go up that ladder to success, the more that you can create a network around you, i.e. collaboration, the easier some things get. And also the more likely people are to help you. Yeah. And, so and, I think that's important, isn't it? And when we've been speaking about collaboration, it does affect all the leadership styles, right? Absolutely. And but we've usually got to do one thing yeah. first before we get there, right? 100%. Yeah. Okay, cool. Should we move on? Yeah. Next one. Okay. Because we've got to move at pace today. Right. We're trying to, stop. <laughs> we're trying to keep it going, Tracy. Okay? Come on, so, mate. That's good. Uh, a deflective mindset Oh, yeah. An interesting So one. these people are, or these mindsets are devoid from accountability. Mm. Everything is against them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the real things that you hear from them and the thing, yeah. it's not my fault. Yeah. What, how can you blame me? Yeah. It wasn't yeah. me. It was them. Yeah. Did, how that, how that sort of looks within a professional environment obviously can get quite, quite um, challenging at best. Yeah. Um, but these people are not taking responsibility. Even if you can show them the CCTV footage of them <laughs> making the mistake, <laughs> you can get 15 witnesses and they still <laughs> turn around and say, wasn't me. Well, that's why I think that's why it's great that we refer to it as the deflected. There's a shield up, isn't there? Yeah. And again, for me, this is like, why are they there? Okay. So there's a number of reasons. Some people are just there. Like you said, they're never going to Mm. admit they're wrong. And it's, it is directly related to previous experiences, issues in the business, change that's not coming to fruition before all Mm. those things. All the people are there because actually there's been a lot of mistakes made, yeah. And, you know, they're maybe not getting the support they need. And there's a bit of a blame culture anyway. So I think the first thing to say is that not everybody who's a deflective mindset is there because they want to be. And I think, again, if we listen, like you said, and and try and find out the real reason, we can start to track them up a little bit more. The key thing here for me with this mindset is that they don't feel accountable. They're not admitting to things. They're not leaning in and working collaboratively. Mm. So we've always got to force them to do it. It's like shocking them a little bit, but yeah. controlled. <laughs> and I, I, feel, I feel as I feel as if when we're talking about the deflective, it is going to be bound. You're going to be bounced off a few times before you actually get through to yeah. actually what's going on. And it could be something that's totally irrelevant to what you're yeah. trying to get them to do. Yeah, but you've got to find out. You've got to find out. And inform yourself as much as you can yeah. before you then in, put in this leadership style of Tracy. <laughs> You're going to give them directive. Because yeah. the thing about directive is, as we keep saying, sometimes when we say that word, people have this shouting at people. And it's not that. Mm. It's about clear, precise instructions. Okay. So if someone's not ready to take accountability, you have to force them to take accountability in a very productive way. Yeah. So if you start to say, okay, I understand that some of this is maybe a bit overwhelming for you. Let's do the simple thing first. You do ABC and come back and let me know how that was. And mm-hmm. if you can nail ABC, we can then move forward. And actually for people who are there for reasons of confidence or blame culture, whatever it might be, the more confidence they get in repetition the more we can start to sneak in a little bit of coaching, which we'll come to later, because yeah. we go from saying, do this and come back. Great job to go this, do this. Great job. Oh, did you see what happened there? Yeah. Go there. Oh, what do you think we should do next? So if we can get them to slowly start to understand that direct is actually a really positive thing and they can grow from it, then we can start to layer in the coaching later on and we can get them up in to another a part of our, our leadership zones. There's there's another way that we've been looking at this straight back zone and having the having a directive link. If you haven't listened yeah. to some of the podcasts before, and when it is that collaboration, is do do these deflective mindsets know what good looks like? Yeah, that's a really good point. Actually, do they actually know? No, this is yeah. your job. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. this is the way you're yeah. supposed to be doing it. And some of the ways that we've sort of looked at that with that other leadership sort of style if you like as well Tracy is that collaboration learning from others and see this this is what good looks like this is what good is 
Yeah. Can you go and do that you in your that? job? Yeah. yeah. I think that's a really good point, actually. Mm. And like we said, collaborative, you know, if we can get directive collaborative, then coaching maybe would be ideal there, wouldn't yeah. it? Um, yeah. Okay. So what's the next one? Okay. A connective mindset then. Yes. So this is the, I like this. This is a bit of me. The networker. A bit of, bit of me. Bit of me. Getting yeah. the right people in the room. Yeah. Um, so if we talk about a well-balanced mindset, shares responsibility, uses resources, and even uses others to drive out outcomes yeah. as well. And this is the epitome, and I love this, Tracy. It's a team player. Yeah. Um, and that's you through and through, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. You don't mind if you have to lean into someone else's superpower to get the job done because no. you like the empowerment it gives them. Yeah. And um, I think I compare this to like someone who really likes to network. They've got good relationships with people. They, you know, they can roll with the punches really quickly. Yeah. And if they've got a big network, that's what I like about it. They know where to go with things. They can pivot quickly. They're open to communication. They love coaching. Yeah. They sometimes even solicit feedback because yeah. they want to grow from it. And it goes without saying that as a consequence of that, it's a really great mindset to have around because the reality is we get some great outputs from that, don't we? And now all you're measuring with your leadership style is that pace setting. Yeah. How fast do you want them to go? Do they need yeah. to slow down a little bit just to concentrate on a task? Yeah. Or is it off you go? I'm going to set you a new task yeah, and I want you, you to stretch yourself. Yeah. There's your structure. Go. Yeah. So so if they're open to coaching, the great thing about mm. that is they're probably asking you for feedback anyway, which is great. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to be nice. You can just be kind. You can give them the feedback that's maybe a little bit rough around the edges sometimes, and they're going to take that and work with it. They're going to love the fact that they can lean into peer-to-peer -peer feedback as well because they're going to have great relationships. Mm. Um, and like you said, pace setting can be a really good way to just give them that little extra edge from time to time So because they're probably masters of what they do. So rather than letting them... Uh, the, you know the fire go out a little bit it's how do we keep igniting that flame in that person um and how do we keep them growing their networks because the bigger their network guess what they're yeah, going to come to you with more solutions yeah. and less questions mm. and guess what your phone stops ringing on your day off it's brilliant imagine that, <laughs> imagine that. so what's the next one so this is where we start to get into how, maybe mindsets that we start to create a little bit more okay um and this is one that we've definitely found so a dependent Oh, okay, yeah. And this is where me starting at T2 was definitely, <laughs> definitely a dependent. I don't think you were extreme dependent. Oh, if, in my head, Tracy, I was a major <laughs> dependent. Um, my little and, baby giraffe. And this, yeah, exactly. And <laughs> actually having it as a, it's, for me, it wasn't necessarily what some of the descriptions we have as an insecure mindset. It was more of just a questioning mindset. Yeah, curious. But, yeah, yeah. But insecure tends to seek reassurance, which is definitely what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, will sanity check everything they do just to make sure it's right but you already know that they know the answer they probably know it yeah, yeah. you probably get you yeah. you're maybe 99.9 percent .9 there and then you just need that little tick in the box confidence but yeah just remember tracy that we create these we can i mean there's two mm -hmm. ways to look at this the first thing is that if you're new to any role any organization any change you maybe want to ask more questions and be curious and i think mm -hmm. that's healthy yeah that's that's okay. Yeah. But if you just were there for a long... Just the lay of the land, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and But then it's, it's it, you know, do you react to the leadership style, which we'll talk about in a minute. But if you have someone that's there a long period of time, there is a possibility that we've either assisted that creation of that yeah. or we've not dealt with it early because if you're or open to coaching and you're, you know, maybe not given the performance you want, but you're keen, the likelihood is you're going to want to know the answers and move on pretty quick from that. You're going to need a little bit more reassurance, aren't you? constantly it might even be that your leadership style is that you keep leaning back into that leader you have to keep going and asking the question to get reassurance and it's maybe because you don't have the empowerment mm. so i think ask yourself the question with this which is are you in that position or is your is your, your team in that position because you're giving them too much support or are they there because they've just not shifted from that mindset yet because the confidence isn't there. Mm. And it, I think if it's someone new to the business, I think you can probably give a little bit of leeway, leeway can't mm. you? Yeah. And um, like I say, if you are being dependent, yeah, it's probably because you don't necessarily know what's going on yet. Yeah. And, and there's autonomous help seeking and dependent help seeking. Yeah. Autonomous help seeking is when you go and you say, I'm seeking to understand because I want to take that information and do something with it. Yeah. And then you'll grow. And that's when you'll move out of that space. If you're coming and doing it from a dependent perspective, it's because you're kind of being almost a little bit blase or even lazy. 
Yeah. You kind of want someone just to pick it up. And so it's like, you know, it, you know, washing the cup, the pots really badly at night. So you know that the, the, the raffle just do them mm. instead and say, leave it to me from now on. Yeah. One of those types of affa- yeah. affairs. Yeah. Um, but for that reason, you know, the most important thing to remember here is um, we're saying here that directive is the first choice with this type of mindset for the same reason to a degree as the de- deflective that if we get repetitions in, we gain confidence. OK, mm-hmm. if we get confidence in, then what happens there is we can then move into curiosity by leaning in with a bit of coaching. OK, so now we've got that. Where would you go next? What, what would you do, do you next? Think? What do you think? Yeah. And then as as we start to get more confidence there, we then move up and move up the scale in terms of, you know, how, how are open to the world we are and our opportunities. And then we start to become even a bit self-directed, don't we? Definitely. Um Okay, so we've got directive and coaching within that mindset. What's the next one? So the next one is an adaptive. Now, okay. an adaptive mindset is really where we want to be trying to get quite a yeah. few people. Um, we are especially people that within our teams. Now, they are confident and driven mindset, mm. individually competent, fast-paced, competitive, open to communication, but where it's a little bit different from the individual is that they are open to that coaching element mm. and they will take on the feedback. They will take yeah. on their, what they need to do next, maybe where they could get the opportunities to upskill. Yeah. And that's, and that's the difference. So yeah. it's, it is really having the confidence to be able to take on the feedback and, yeah. and actually use it for, yeah. for, for the next time you go forward. These are your, your ultimate task switches, aren't they? Those are the people yeah. that can, you know, be working on several things you know alongside each other Mm. still be listening to what's going on in the corner have a little bit of an eye on what's going on over there and just be really positive when it comes to change i guess they they see it as a growth opportunity they'll learn quickly and on the job they'll fix the plane in flight so to speak yeah and generally have a really positive um, way of doing things a very much a can-do attitude and as a consequence of that, they're really high performers and um, really open to coaching. The thing with this kind of mindset, though, and I think this is probably, I'm not trying to bring it down a notch, but I'm just going to just going to say it. Quite often, these are our big hitters, our, our really rounded performers, and we overload them a little bit sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes, because we know they're doing so well, we don't give them as much of our attention. So they can quickly, quickly fall into that indi- individual mindset if mm. we're not careful. So what we said with this mindset is that we still need to apply coaching because they want to learn. They they've got a curious mindset. They want to learn from you and ask questions and learn from others, but we definitely need to lean in there with the feedback on the coaching side as well from uh, the element of how they're, you know, what they're doing really well, what they can extend and then maybe even stretching with a bit of pace. Marginal setting gains, again. right? Yeah. Marginal gains because people who are doing really well, we tend to think as leaders, I'll t- I won't micromanage. I'll stay stay out of the way because that's what they want to do. And that's partially true with a lot of people. Mm. Um, but we do need to lean in and still remember that, you know, we can get stuck in a rut. We can feel like we're not being seen and heard. It's a little bit slightly neglectful, isn't it? Yeah. And Mm. even if we don't intend to, that's how it can come across. So that's why plugging back in coaching somewhere. And remember, it's not always about your skill. Sometimes coaching is about leadership. Sometimes coaching is about business acumen. Sometimes it's about self-development, whatever it might be. That person can always learn something from, you know, things that are going on in the business. So it's super important to remember that. Yeah, definitely. And the final mindset that we're going to talk about today, Tracy, is a methodical mindset. Now, if we think about these in a yeah. in a, in a methodical way, if you like, <laughs> um, is a focused and methodical mindset. Works at a considered pace, won't be rushed or deterred from a task, and has a real focus on the quality of what they're producing. Quality. Who doesn't need that? Who, who doesn't, doesn't need, need that? that? Team. Who doesn't need that? My, my own after after delivering quite a lot of these workshops to people is that people like to think that the methodical yeah and it's not a bad thing no it's it's time and a place and i think this is the thing that we like to kind of land on with this is that we all need a methodical person in our team Mm. because if we didn't we'd be screwed especially if we're all you know fast moving fast-paced people a methodical person is going to keep us on track and and dot the i's cross the t's right Mm. Problem we've got sometimes with that type of mindset is they are maybe not as good with change, not as agile, not as you know quick to react to things because they want to be too specific with things. So essentially what we're trying to manage there is not their quality, it's just their adaptability. 
It's, you know, can we get, give them more confidence to move quicker and maybe move with, I don't know, instead of having five pieces of information, having two and making a, you know, a quicker decision. Can I, ask, can I ask you a question then, Tracy? Yes. What makes a methodical mindset? So what potentially mindsets have they come from mm. and the reasons for them becoming too methodical, if you like. Well, sometimes it's their makeup. You know, if we think of what we see in print and, you know, even when we do social styles, analytical mindsets are more likely to be there, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And they are the type of people who want to know all the facts to be, to feel really, really empowered and make good decisions. But I think one of the other things that I notice a lot is that some people who are there, they're actually there because they've made mistakes before. Mm -hmm. So if they've made mistakes before, they're very cautious of making that same mistake again. And then they appear too slow, maybe a little bit too methodical mm -hmm. to someone on the outside if they don't understand. The other thing that sometimes causes it, I'm going to, I'm just going to go there, is perfectionism. Mm -hmm. If we're a very perfectionistic leader, it I, either throws our team either way, I think. It either throws them into being super fast paced and, and uh, pace setting to keep up with you yeah. all the time. Or actually it sets them into a little bit of a panic because they think that they can't reach your standards. Because if you're a perfectionist, your 100% is actually someone else's 180%. Yeah. So they're more likely to think, I just need to nail this a little bit and, and come down um, you know, to the detail before I actually present it. So we can actually, interestingly enough, you know, cause a little bit of a, an issue with that, which is why we suggest directive in coaching. Directive is you know, giving people, again, the facts to go do something. And coaching is more around, you know, asking more questions, being curious and trying to find out what they need to feel more confident. And I suppose that looks like a couple of different things. So I think that really, if we use that collaborative leadership style and we actually said, right, there's your, there's your methodical, a methodical mindset. Who would we, which other mindset might we put them together with? Yeah. If we then sort of said, right, we're going to put them with an adaptive mindset. And say, look, again, not just we don't just need the people that are individual, the individual mindset that are, need that a little bit of guidance to, to to show them what good looks like. Yeah, these guys know what good look like, good looks like. Yeah, but all they need is that little bit, little bit more of speed. Push. Yeah, yeah, um, and to see maybe a little view of a process if they like. Yeah, because the adaptive mindset still got a process; they just mm. move a little quicker, don't they? Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think that's a really good point. You know, buddying up with someone that you think they can learn from. And equally, I would say the adaptive can probably learn from the methodical because yeah. they can realize that actually sometimes they maybe go out of the traps too quick and maybe don't dot the I's cross T's. So mm. I think there's a, a very fine balance there. And of course that encourages collaborative. And I think as a leader, particularly with a methodical mindset, it is about if you're quite methodical or analytical, you can have a tendency in shadow sometimes to take yourself off and not involve yourself with the team or feel a bit detached and I think the more that you can encourage that adaptive mindset to, you know, come out of that space and learn from other people. And sometimes it's just getting a bit more involved with the cultural aspects of things. You can open them up to new possibilities and like you say, learning styles, et cetera. So I think that's a good way to look at it. So essentially, I guess what we're trying to say is that, you know, overall, the, the key thing here is you've got to get to know your people. I like to think of it this way. If you were going to take a holistic look down on your team and you were going to try and categorize your team, you might have them all in different mindsets next month. Depends mm. on the project and where yeah, they are. Definitely. It's very unlikely they'll go from one extreme to the other very quickly, but you can coach them there for sure. But you've got to think about why they're there. What's your default leadership set, uh, leadership setting? Because if your default is completely opposite to what they need, then you need to adapt and that's what we're going to cover on the next podcast is how we do that really well. We're doing mm. a very light touch here in terms of leadership styles. Um, and then the other thing is, is, you know, can you keep them in the right place? And if you've got someone in a place where you've tried so, so hard to turn them around and nothing seems to be working, where does the buck stop? You know, when do you mm. stop putting effort into the wrong energy I cycle? think more, 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 more importantly, it's, it's your time as well. Yeah, and you don't need a mood hoover, let's no, be honest. No. And the other thing is, remember this, that if you're spending too much time with the wrong mindset and we haven't shifted them, we either need to change our style because it's not working or we need to accept defeat sometimes. Mm. Because if we don't, then the people who need the nurturing side yeah. of us don't get us and they're more likely to get fed up, move to a more negative mindset or quite quit. Yeah. And we don't want that. Yeah. No, we don't want that at all. So... Thank you so much for that little whistle stop tour around the mindset yeah, types I like that. today. 
was enjoyable. Um, hope that was a little bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a reminder to some of you who've been on some of our model uh, modules, sorry. Um, for the rest of you that are, are just tuning in now, if you want to read more about these mindsets, then head over to our hub and you'll find loads more information. And we will follow this podcast up next week. Perfect. With something around leadership styles, right? Look forward to it. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again for another T2 Hubcast. Introducing the T2 Leadership Retreat 2023, the ultimate leadership development experience from the people performance people. Join us at the prestigious Grove Resort in Hertfordshire for our annual leadership retreat, where you will be joined by other senior industry leaders in this immersive three-day experience. The T2 Leadership Retreat will include a free night all-inclusive stay at the Five Star Grove Resort, multiple leadership tasks, sessions and challenges, an in-depth personal leadership 360 report, an exciting off-site activity at a nearby location, as well as access to psychometric profiling and self-awareness tools. The retreat will be facilitated by experienced professionals from the world of business, the military and professional sport, and will feature high-profile guest speakers, Sir Dave Brailsford, Director of Sport for Ineos, and former New Zealand Rugby Union captain, Sean Fitzpatrick. To book your place on the Ultimate Leadership Experience of the Year, or for more information, please contact help at transuperformance.com. 